it gets worse. It gets positively reinforced if we fear our own physiological responses. If we can feel them and be with them, it doesn't mean it's just going to disappear. We might need to ride that wave a little bit. We want to treat them with a little more cognition, a bit more maturity, and know that this is going to come down if we can be with them in a more gentler, more curiosity-based, more observant way. The moment we disconnect from that quality, it drives back into the system for another day. The thing to understand is that our culture, our society, the medical world, even a big part of our mind-body world has taught us when we feel what we would call these negative sensations, these negative emotions, a panic attack essentially is heart rate is going to increase. The muscles are going to feel tight and strained. Our breath might feel constricted. Our belly might get all into knots. Um, we get into this hyperdrive of thinking we're going to die. These are all symptoms of the sympathetic nervous system going through the roof. It is fight flight on steroids. And the way to work with this stuff, and this person really, um, I commend them. If it's you who wrote this, thank you for writing this. They, they really felt in and respected their body's physiology and took to heart, obviously, what I taught in this Seven Steps to De-Stress. It's an ebook, book um, And they, they just went with it. And what happened is they offered the system what it wanted, which was to just notice and be with those sensations, to be with that physiology and to not dismiss it as bad or wrong or I'm in trouble, but to feel it for what it is. And when we offer the system this, it can shift things very quickly. For some, when they start to connect to the environment and look around, it can be terrifying. It can feel like death because they have been internal and so tunnel vision because in the past, the outside world was dangerous. It was a threat, whether it was actual things flying at them, like in war, combat, maybe there was an accident where something hit them or there were people around them who were completely um, off the charts, violent, chaotic, maybe it was a physical abuse, maybe it was verbal, mental, what, whatever it might be. So if the environment was so, so toxic and so stressful, a person might default to shut out that. And so when they start to turn on the engine of orienting and looking and seeing, it can cause a little bit of what we would call sympathetic activation, what some would call anxiety, a little bit of worry, a little bit of this doesn't feel good. This feels a little unsafe. I'd rather go back into the tunnel vision. I'd rather go back into being frozen and not seeing around me. So your nervous system isn't just one nerve. The autonomic nervous system is part of the peripheral nervous system. So it's not the brain and the spinal cord. It's everything that comes out of the brain and the spinal cord. Everyone's talking about the vagus nerve. That's a cranial nerve. It comes out of the brain. All the nerves that make our arms move and our digestion work and our reproductive organs work and the hormone release. It's coming out of the spinal cord, these nerves. So when we have this high level of stuck fight flight, it isn't just impacting the nerves. It's impacting all the things that those nerves touch. When we talk about anxiety, it can show up in physiological ways. And so I want to make that connection because people might say, oh, I don't have any anxiety. I'm cool as a cucumber, but I have IBS. I have chronic pain. I have fibromyalgia. I've got an autoimmune thing. I'm constantly in relationship troubles. I can't sleep. You know, the list is long. All these symptomologies that come from dysregulation. Anxiety is not anxiety per se. It's stored survival stress. This is different than mind-based, we often call it anxiety, which might be kind of that FOMO, that fear of missing out, that anxiety that we put upon ourselves with rumination and mental thoughts that just don't serve us. That is different than this biological anxiety that feels like the heart, your heart is going to burst out of your chest, or the gut is clenched, this worry that makes you sweat, that makes your hands sweaty, that makes you want to, you know, dry heave when you have to talk to someone. Those are biological responses. So if we 
think about anxiety in that way, this stored survival stress, what it is, is old, old sensation, old fight and flight, the sympathetic nervous system, which is part of the autonomic nervous system. It is that energy, that desire to protect, to, you know, to get out of the way, to run, to flee, and even maybe to hide. It is that stuff coming up and out. So if we've had, let's just say, um, a terrible childhood, which is so common for so many people that are watching these videos, which we know due to the ACE study leads to chronic illness, mental illness, a whole host of problems, adrenal fatigue, autoimmune, cancer, heart disease, you name it. I'll post some of the ACE study links below as well. So if we've grown up with this, this unsafety, this inability to grow our capacity to be with intense emotions and sensations and difficulties and challenges, and we weren't taught from our primary caregiver how to self-regulate, how to calm down naturally with time, with support, with safety, all these things that human beings, mammals really need to release intensity. If we didn't get that from day one, what will happen is it gets stored up inside of us. Time doesn't let these things just pop out on their own. They get stored up. This is what's called the freeze response or the shutdown response, part of the parasympathetic. If we've had bad stuff that has occurred to us and we did not have the the modeling, the teaching, the wherewithal to know what to do with these intense survival energies, fight, flight, they get stored inside. And then here's what happens. As we age, as we become more intelligent and wise, and we want to heal this stuff, which I'm assuming many of you want, these little gremlins start to find their way to the top. That's what's occurring in our system when we've had stuff pushed down for so long, literally depressed. And then we start to be more aware of these things. We start to get in our body because these scary things disconnect us from our body. As we start to wake up our body, we will feel these survival strategies, anxiety, which in my world is really just survival stress, fight, flight energy, desperately trying to get out. One of the most important parts around somatic work and healing the nervous system and restoring regulation is we have to get better at being with the feelings of fear without fearing them. We have to gain enough knowledge, theory. We have to gain enough resourcing of how we connect with our body and the environment so that we can feel these bubbles of intensity and know them and sense them and be with them, but not bring more survival stress onto them. And this is why a lot of people have severe panic and anxiety. They just don't know how to be with these intense sensations. And so we either go into a full-blown panic attack or we take something to calm ourselves down. But what it isn't addressing is the lack of ability to be with these fight, flight, and often freeze-like symptoms. And again, it's because we typically didn't have that connection early in life that taught us how to be with big events usually through a parent or a caregiver. What we might consider anxiety or nervousness or tension, that is coming from the core autonomic level. We might interpret it in our brain as awfulness and anxiety and depression, but it's a physical sensation that's manifesting as a result of something going on or our perception of the environment or old perceptions. So this ability to really listen and feel and go, oh, this is, this is me. This is my body saying something. Yeah. And to bridge it back to ch like to infants, when we're teaching infants how to become self-regulated, when they have a distress, when they're crying, hungry, cold, scared, we, we pick them up, we soothe them, and that's how they learn self-regulation. So a portion of this work as adults is going back to that interoception, listening to our insides, and att attuning to ourselves and offering ourselves what we need yep. so that we can find that soothing um, and then learning about why and how this system connects in the way that it does. To wrap it up, this rest digest, part of that is repairing the immune system, enhancing the cells so that they are healthy. 
And one of those parts of rest digest is called barrier keeping of the gut, barrier keeping of the gut. If you think of the gut, or if you know the gut, if you've ever seen real sausage, you know that the lining of the gut is very thin. It's very easily broken. And so when we go to sleep at night, we want to go into this low tone dorsal to repair because that repairing is stitching up the lining of the gut. It's keeping the barrier tight. It's keeping it solid. And that solidity and that strength is important so that we don't have these bowel problems and leaky gut problems. If it's not solid, we're not gonna absorb the nutrition that we're eating. This is why so many people who have these troubles with their guts, they cut out all the food and they're like, I've cleaned up everything and yet I'm still having trouble. And that usually is a, is a sign that there is this autonomic dysregulation occurring within the physiology. It isn't in the brain, it's not just in one spot, it's in the entire system. And usually when we have really deep gut problems, we also will ask a person, they will have trouble with anxiety, they will have trouble with sleeping, they will have trouble with their immune system, they might be extremely afraid of certain things. It's all, indicative of this survival stress that is basically running the show within the system. Because someone mentioned, um, I started SBSM over one year ago. After two months, my anxiety increased so much and I've stayed at this high level, even though I think I do the work at my pace. Is this normal? Yes, unfortunately it is. Um, if you haven't listened to some of my stories, Seth just did an interview with me earlier this year. It's quite long but it goes through my um, process of coming out of functional freeze, which I think I've finally gotten out of fully this year. <laughs> Only took 13 years. So for those of you starting here, do not be frustrated. You can still do a lot of good stuff when you're coming out of functional freeze. But what I will share is there were moments in the last couple of years where I almost drove myself to the hospital. I know it's so tough to feel these low level anxieties or high anxieties, but this is where your practices of grounding, sitting, resourcing, orienting, feeling it, you know, the thumping of the heart, like maybe there needs to be a calming or maybe there is a rage and a scream that has to come out of that thumping. And I can't tell you do this when this, you have to feel it and you have to go with your impulse as to what your gut is telling you.